Hey everyone! In this video we're going to be converting a velocity time graph to a position time graph. This will be the reverse of our last video. Uh, we have a little velocity time graph drawn already down below and we're going to draw the matching position time up above which is labeled D for our distance or displacement in our time. Once again the huge thing to remember is that velocity is the slope of a position time graph. That is literally what the velocity graph represents, the slope of each region of our position time graph. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be examining each little interval on that velocity time graph, each little region on that velocity time graph, measuring what it is and knowing that that's what our slope is of the position time graph. So first we'll look at 0 to 1 seconds. At 0 to 1 seconds, the velocity is at a height of 2. Because our velocity is at a height of 2, it means that our slope must equal 2 of the position time graph, which means that we're going to go over 1, up 2. That's how slope works, over 1, up 2. We make a little dot, we connect the dots, and that is our first region complete. One down, five little regions to go. From 1 to 2 seconds, in this region, when we look at our velocity graph, we can see that the velocity equals negative 1. That means the slope of our position time graph in this region must have a slope of negative 1, which means we're going to go over 1, down 1. So in the region from 1 to 2 seconds, we need to go over 1, down 1. Hooray! Second region complete. Now, we can do 2 to 3 seconds, but we can see that it's the same as 3 to 4 seconds. So, we can do the 2 to 4 seconds as one nice step here, because they're both the same. It's a flat line. Velocity is 0. The slope equals 0, which means we're going to go over 1, up 0. We're not going to go up or down and we're going to do this twice. So for both the second to third seconds and third to fourth seconds, our slope has to be zero, which means over one, up nothing, and over one, up nothing. We're going to look at now the fourth to fifth seconds, but before we do that, we're just going to clean this up and get this out of the way. A good thing to remember is that if you can convert a velocity time graph to a position time graph, it's actually the identical procedure for converting an acceleration time graph to a velocity time graph. And that, that's something that would help out my students a fair bit because we convert between displacements and velocities. But the procedure that I'm showing you here is identical to going acceleration to velocity as well. The next region that we're going to look at is from 4 seconds to 5 seconds. In this little interval of our velocity time graph from 4 to 5 seconds, the velocity is at a value of 1. Therefore, the slope of our position time graph must equal 1. That means we're going to go over 1, and then we're going to go up 1. You always go up or down by whatever the value of the slope is. You always go over 1. So we make a little dot, I like the dots because they help, and we connect it. It went over one, up one. Final region. For the region that goes from five to six seconds, we look at our velocity time graph. We see that it's at a height of two. Velocity is two, therefore on our distance time graph, our position time graph, it also has to have a slope of two. We're going to go over one, up two. No, we go over one, up one, two, make a little dot, and we connect them. And just like that, we have an absolutely fabulous position time graph. The trick to doing this was to look at each interval of the velocity time graph, recognize that in each little one second interval, it was telling you the slope of that region, and then graphing a small fragment of your position time graph up above with a slope that was the same as the velocity time graph. As long as you keep doing it as little tiny increments, you should be able to get a position time graph no problem at all.
If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you very much, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you next time.